across the knees of Neil Morrison. Normally plays at centre field as Morrison. We'll have to have a look when they go out in there. Or they may use the re-entry rule. Wayne Nichols across to John Lowe's for the up. At first. There's Morrison back to the dugout. Keith, he doesn't necessarily have to go out, out into the field. They may well re-enter Corcoran into the game to use his very splendid fielding ability. So Jimmy Cotter is next. White to Cotter. That's John Joyce. Joyce to John Lowe's. Three down. Well, Cotter chopped that one straight down into the turf, and it was a very high bounce, but well covered by John Joyce from a shortstop. Moving to his left, took the ball and fired it straight to John Lowe's for the out at first to complete the innings here at the top of the sixth. Miramar still in the lead. So now we head to the bottom of the sixth. Yes, there's the top all finished, and there's the huddle from the Mir with the Miramar team. Gene them along, telling them not to lose the momentum because having gained it, they must keep running and uh, running very strongly ahead of Cardinals because if Cardinals are allowed onto the bases and get a, get a bit of practice against Michael White, that will set them up for this back-to-back -back game that must now be played because this will be Cardinals' first loss if indeed they do lose it. And the Buramar, of course, will have had one loss also. Neil Morrison batted in that last innings, and we'll see if Corcoran's back in the field. I, th I think he might be, actually. Keith, can you see him out there? Yes, he... Yes, he's there. There he is. So they're obviously uh, putting their faith in his ability in the field, despite the, uh, the limp that he's got, the injury that he's suffered. So it's bottom of the sixth innings now. Miramar at bat again. Into the batter's box comes John Joyce. John Joyce, a lawyer by profession, who is now employed as a chippy. Corcoran. That's why he's there. Did it comfortably. Judged it nicely. Didn't, not full, uh, full percentage uh, use of his arm there. Just about uh, three quarters strength, Gary. Something like that. Certainly giving himself lots of time by gathering the ball in as quickly as he does. And that's the advantage of being uh, such a good glove man and also getting rid of the ball as quickly as he does once it enters his glove. So Dennis Chain, who got the hit. The only hit so far. Off McGann. Off McGann made those two walks which turned out to be disastrous early in the game chain scored them there's two strikes against dennis chain bottom of the sixth but his team out to a three nil lead There's the hit again. <laughs> Cotter underneath it. So Chain again. Hit him again, this time out to the right of Jimmy Cotter, who made the catch. Oh, well, Cotter also a fast mover in the outfield and uh, in the outfield and moves very rapidly around the bases also and uh, he would be one of the better fielders in New Zealand at the moment he certainly is a fine all-round player Michael Nichols
There's Nichols. Ball one, strike two. That was the dropper. You saw it dig into the dirt. That really does drop very savagely at the end of its flight. Ball again. Ball three, strike two. On Mike Nichols. Batting at number five for this very strong lineup for the Miramar team. Corcoran again. Foster Green, he's out. Nice throw again from Chad Corcoran. Well, a game almost limping to its conclusion, Keith. The. Uh, the spirit seems to have gone out of that Cardinals team and uh, Miramar just sort of going through the motions. You see the big sign there in the in the background at the at the back of the fence. There's a large white sponsors sign. Now uh, that's got an interesting story in this tournament, Gary. Indeed it has. Any individual who hits that sign on the full qualifies for an automatic home run. But what's more important is that he also qualifies for five thousand dollars prize money i guess no uh, one has hit it yet dennis chain uh, would be well he wouldn't have it uh, in the forefront of his thoughts i guess when he came into the batter's box but well, when he saw the ball sailing out over second there it was on its way you've got to be thinking about it with <laughs> five big ones waiting for you <laughs> three runs to nil miramar lead we're into the top half of the seventh innings and a Cardinals do not at least equal Miramar's score in this innings. The game will be all over and then we're into the back-to-back -back double header to find the true winner of this tournament. What odds Cardinals, Keith? Not too good, I'd say. It's Mark Sorensen coming into the batter's box, this fine young prospect, 16 years of age. Sturdily built, uh, also, the Nino College uh, first 15 footballer. So Sorensen facing White. That was safe in earlier in the game. There's two visits to the batter's box, one hit. Only two hits have been taken from the pitching of Michael White, one of them by Sorensen and the other one by Alan Taylor. No outs, and this the early stage of the seventh innings. Ball one, strike two. Whirling, windy Hut Valley afternoon. Foul up again by Sorensen. Well, is it a hit? Up to Joyce. Good arm again to Lowe's. John Joyce has the ball firing at him off the bat of Mark Sorensen. Again, climbing into it. Does Joyce across the diamond for the out with the strong arm of his well displayed. Makes it one out. So Cliff Joseph it is now coming in. left-handed second baseman who throws right-handed bats from the left strike just of a computer operator in the Air Force 
formerly played in the uh, Waikato. Again, fouled off. Just between the camera and the diamond, there's a very fine netting, which you could probably just see, which prevents the ball flying uh, up and uh, into the uh, stand, into the valuable uh, television equipment. Not to mention the commentators. <laughs> That's right. Not quite so valuable. Ball one, strike two, with one out in the top half of the seventh innings, and this team at bat, Cardinals, trailing. Three runs to nil. Struck out. There's Cliff Joseph. Number 14, who has been struck out for the first time in this game, as I said yesterday, son of a very popular Waikato figure, Ray Joseph. Right now. So this is Brian Green, and he's uh, inadvertently hit it across the lows, who makes the out at first, and that completes the innings. And that completes the ball game. Well, three runs to nil. Miramar, very convincing when he's over Cardinals. That puts us in a situation where we need a, another game to be played with both Cardinals and Miramar. Having suffered one loss, the next game should be. and wasn't giving an inch at home plate. Tremendous throw there from centre field. Remember, there he is, there's Neil Morrison, looking very pleased with himself, just to the left there. Just leaned back for a second, the big smile all over his face. What a throw that was. Straight into Sorensen, who was able to make the tag and stop Grant Miles from scoring. And in a game as tight as this, that could have been the winning and losing of the ball game right there in that incident. Keith, I do think that Miramar did the right thing in sending Miles because not only is he a fast runner, but there were also two outs, and the chances of swinging back-to-back -back hits together were probably pretty remote. Miles being the fast runner, an inexperienced Mark Sorensen at uh, home plate ready to lay on the tag, but he was very equal to that occasion. Well played, given 10 out of 10. Okay, top of the fourth, Chad Corcoran, the 29-year-old Californian who's in the Cardinals team, faces Michael White. Hey! What a tight game this is. No score between the two front runners in this tournament. Oh, he's, he's changed sides, Gary. Hey! That's what they call a switch hitter. Bat from either side. Strike out for Cochrane. One out. Strikeouts five for White. Twice uh, he's had uh, Chad Cochrane. So Jimmy Cotter. Started at centre field, has gone across the first base with the retirement from the game through injury of Brian Green. We That's high. Up. Nicely pulled down by Kenny. See the catch is a special breed of fitness, a special kind of fitness needed to spring out of that crouch position each time for the catcher. Oh. 
There's a pitch that was coming through the center of the strike zone, and it was a rising delivery with lots of backspin on it. Climbed up through the strike zone. There's the dropper. Well, that really does confuse the batters because he half of the eight innings. Well, the first batter up for Miramar in this bottom half of the eight innings will be top of the order, Grant Miles. And if ever they have the opportunity to use the top batters in this team of theirs, it is now. Ready to face the pitching of McGann is Grant Miles. McGann in readiness to meet this fellow here, Grant Miles, top of the order. Batting at number one, and Grant Miles will then be followed by Wayne Nichols and John Joyce. Strike one. So it's already down to sudden death in many respects. So Gary, a, a run, a hit here, could finish the ball game safely for Miramar. Right. That one's not going anywhere. And nor is Miles, although he's a very fast runner. The ball bobbled into foul territory. Strike two, bottom half of the eighth innings. Only just foul, firing it down the third base foul line. <laughs> it's cold at the moment. The sun is shining through, and the shadows are very cold. And Miles is struck out. Wayne Nichols will be the new batter in for Miramar in this game, having all the signs of lasting forever. Nichols. One out. Strike one. Foul ball. Well, it looked to be coming off the bat pretty rapidly, but it was right down the throat of Alan Taylor. Makes it two out. There's Taylor having taken. It's a relatively simple catch, but they're not always as simple as they look, of course. John Joyce up the bat, who already has fired one over the fence today.
John Joyce into the batter's box. Ball one, strike one. Two outs, the bottom half of the eighth innings, very much into extra time. Wow, there's the hit from Nichols out to center field. There are two outs. He stays on first base, does John Joyce. Sorry, that's uh, Wayne. No, that's John Joyce, safe on first base. Dennis Chain into the batter's box with the opportunity of taking this game from Cardinals. Strike one, and with a swing like that, he is going for the fence. Thank you very much, Peter. Well, uh, certainly there it is in uh, a nutshell on the scoreboard. Going all up, live action from Fraser Park. This is the second game we have today between Cut and there it is. It's all tied up at the top of the ninth. Uh, with no score on the board earlier today, Miramar uh, beat Cardinals by three to nil, and uh, that second final to be to begin straight away. And this is that second final. We're at the top of the ninth. So what we're going to do now is uh, follow this action through to its completion. And if there's time before 7 o'clock, we'll go back and play you the last part of the first final this afternoon between the two. It's all a little bit complicated. We hope you've enjoyed the golf. The softball's been tight here. Gary Ward, if a little unspectacular. Yes, it has. In the first game, the spectacular stuff was there right from the first innings with two runs scoring for Miramar. That was added to later in the game. Uh, the action did sort of come to a bit of an end after that. But this game, as far as a purist is, con uh, is concerned, has been gripping. But as an entertainment spectacle, it's lacked much. So let's uh, just introduce you to the leading performers in the game. Here's one of them, Michael White, the Miramar pitcher, who's uh, along with Paul McGann on the mound for Cardinals. Done pretty well. Here's Jimmy Cotter in the batter's box now. You're joining us a little late, but uh, the tension has been slowly building up throughout the nine innings to this situation. At the top of the ninth, Jimmy Cotter for Cowan's Cardinals in the batter's box. A run here will just about close the game out for oh. Cardinals. Remember, if they go to the tenth innings, we have the tiebreaker situation where they begin the innings with a man on second base. Jimmy Cotter in the batter's box, Michael White number one. There's the rising delivery from Michael White. Takes the count to ball one and strike two. Jimmy Cotter, who so far in this game has been struck out twice, that makes it three times. Three strikeouts for Jimmy Cotter. That makes it the first out of the innings. And so far in this game, Michael White has recorded 13 strikeouts, has given up four hits, no walks, and seven runners have been left on the bases for Cardinals. So the new batter into the box is the man we introduced it to you yesterday, 16-year-old Mark Sorensen, son of the former New Zealand captain. And he slices the first one off, and the man to the left there, you see, is his father, Dave Sorensen, coaching the team. And that's Mark looking down to advice from his coach. There's Dave Sorensen to the left, the signaling uh, with the tapping the hand up and down the arms. And Mark Sorensen, sturdy young lad, catcher, is in the batter's box. Strike one against him. Graham Kenny is catching for Murma. An inside pitch there, which is gloved very nicely by Kenny. 
Mark Sorensen with that very front-on confrontation with Michael White. Puts the button down. He might be there. The error is made by the Miramar infield. Sorensen diving at first base. So Sorensen with the dive at first base gets the safety. Watch it again. The running bunt. Sorensen puts it down. Streaking in is Wayne Nichols. And the rocketed throw across the diamond is too late as the dive comes from Sorensen. It would have been too late anyway. And there Hamilton gathers it in behind the action. Sorensen safe on first. And the next man into the batter's box, into the left-handed batter's box, is the second baseman, Cliff Joseph, who's had a good tournament here. And we have Sorensen on one. Hey! One out. Cliff Joseph, the left-hander, number 14, with that bottle-shaped bat, has been to bat three times for one safe hit. And with one out, the potential winner of the game on first base. Oh. Two attempts at bunting from Joseph. As you see, both of them unsuccessful. The runner on first base, there he is, Mark Sorensen. The breeze gathers momentum here at Fraser Park with been in blustery conditions for the whole weekend and things have not improved this afternoon thankfully the rain has stayed away Joseph facing number one Michael White oh. struck out two strikeouts recorded in this innings by Michael White takes his strikeout tally to 14 and the new batter to come in will be Neil Morrison. Now, just explaining to you why Morrison is into this game. Earlier in the fixture, we had Brian Green playing on first base, but the ball bounced savagely up from the dirt into his face, did some damage to his mouth, and he was off to hospital. He's back in the, in the ground at the moment. He's all right. And there are two outs, and there's Neil Morrison twice at bat for two safe hits. So that is not a bad way to come into a ball game. So Morrison in the batter's box, Sorensen on one. Steps out of the batter's box to gather some composure, I suppose, does Neil Morrison. He's had a great day. Two safe hits from twice in the batter's box and a great throw earlier from Mountain Centre Field to stop a Miramar run on home plate. A great throw in over about 70 or 80 metres to his catcher. Mark Sorensen, Sorensen on first at the moment. Michael White. An outside pitch trying to tempt the batter Neil Morrison to get into it, but uh, no, he doesn't bother doing that, so Sorensen stays on first. Reminding you that this is live action from Fraser Ballpark in Lower Hutt of the final between Cardinals and Murma. Top of the ninth innings. 16 innings have been going so far this afternoon. There's the diving Sorensen safe on second. And my word, he was flying down the base path and dived at second base. He's successful in getting there. The throw from Kenny, just a fraction too late. Well done from Mark Sorensen. He's only 16 years of age. He has the confidence of, and composure of much greater years than that. Now with two outs, two outs, and this the top half of the ninth innings. Now there's a little conference mid uh, midfield in the, in the on the mound, uh, Gary. A bit of a moment for reflection here. Well, I'm just wondering whether or not uh, even considering walking this uh, this batter, I would think not. But uh, three balls. Who knows? It's, uh, so far up, he's been on base three times out of three. There's the deliberate walk. They're yep. deliberately walking Neil Morrison to create the force play. Now, the crowd's booing. But it's not something to boo about. It's a tactical measure that Miramar have taken. And I think the crowd should be appreciating rather than criticising the move. 
Yes, it's in the game, and uh, it brings Alan Taylor into the batter's box. Now, he had a hit off White in the previous game, out along to right field. So, Alan Taylor, who really gets down and stares out the pitcher. Look at this. Sorensen on second, Morrison on first, and Cardinals, the host club here for this tournament, itching to inch their man around and take this final out. So although you joined us late, this has been slowly building to the situation in recent moments. There's Taylor's hit. Will they get it? Oh, oh what a catch! What? Mike Nichols! Well, did he have to go back for that? It boomed off the bat of Alan Taylor. And it had all the appearances of going over the fence. Now watch it come off the bat. Wax it off the bat. And back and back and back goes Michael Nichols as the ball hangs in the air. Up goes the glove. Just gets it, but only just at that. Keith, what a catch. Tremendous catch from Michael Nichols over in the right field and there it is we hit for the bottom of the ninth now with cardinals and miramar locked at nil all all the chances have been there for both teams both have had many runners on the bases throughout this game neither side has been able to capitalize on those opportunities and there we saw what was very nearly a dramatic ending to the game because it would have been an ending to the game despite the fact that miramar are batting last in every innings there was no way that they would peg back Three runs and the man of the moment Michael Nichols who snared that catch just a moment ago it's his turn to step into the batter's box and that will have given Miramar a psychological advantage well I had the psychological advantage earlier in the afternoon by winning the first match between the two by three to nil uh, it was a good win too after getting away to a good start and scoring two in the first innings but they've been rather tied down by Paul McGann and the Cardinals team in the second game. And now, with that confidence booster, who knows, it could be Michael Nichols who took the catch, who now comes into the batter's box, who could lead off for them again. 